Rochelle and Eric. Hello from both of us. <laughs> uh, we just got through saying I love you, so, but you know, it still goes. I still love you. He says, I love you. He goes, never misses a moment to say, I love you. Well, no, we, we don't. And we didn't that, we didn't miss a moment when you were alive too. I'm already exhausted yeah. because my son-in-law is getting orientation out of town for a new job and Michelle's working mm -hmm. night to shift in the ER. So I've been taking care of the, their kids and Easton, oh my God, he's like two and some months and he is a, oh, Girl, he's a handful. He opens up cabinets and drawers and gets on. He's into vacuum cleaners, but he's really happy when he does it. He's not one of those handful of kids that because they're angry or sour. So he's just right, weak. just busy. But anyway, Eric yeah. says he's a busy, busy boy. Oh my busy god, boy. he is very yeah. busy. Uh, yeah. Anywho, well, we are going to interview Coco again. And guess what, peeps? Yeah. You didn't know it. We already did this before, but I forgot to push record. But I see recording, recording, recording. So we're good. <laughs> All right. Eric, so, did you uh did you bring Coco in? Eric says, absolutely. Coco's already been here. He says we are all ready to go. And Coco's just saying too, um, thank you so much for this opportunity because uh, I'm getting the feeling like um there's been a little bit of time or whatever has transpired since the last time we spoke. It's like something has opened up a little bit more. And Eric says that things happen for a reason, you know, okay. things happen and, and that this will be even better today. So that's good. Well, thank you, Coco, for, you know, having to do it twice. I hate to put you out because I know how busy you are as a gorilla in heaven. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. So um, this is really almost all for one blog member, but I might add in some. Now, as many of you might not know, Coco, the gorilla, passed away June 19th, 2018 in her sleep, and she was 46 years old. Awesome. Uh, so, um, Coco, first I wanna ask, what caused your death? So, um, she's bringing me right to the heart. And she's talking about um, the heart slowing down and stopping. Um, she gives me the feeling of not feeling well or not being well, um, but that uh, it was very much a very peaceful passing. There wasn't anything like a, a disease or anything of that sort that it seems to be of a very natural passing. All right, so just died of old age. Her heart just wore out. Uh, did you ever have a life as a human being? Now, um, this is funny because Coco did show us the first time we talked to her a life as a human being. And she is giving me the same type of images, but I'm seeing it from a little different perspective than I saw before. And she's showing me that uh, a child um, and I'm not getting a location, but it's dry. It has cactus or that type of um, foliage around. And I'm go I want to say Mexico. I want to say something okay. like that. Well, Eric, um, can, uh, Eric, where is she giving images from? Eric's saying South America. Oh, South America. I don't know, okay. I don't know if there's cactuses in South America or oh, not. I'm sure. But, I'm sure there yeah. are. Okay. And tell me about that life, Coco. Coco's talking about um, family. Um, there's also a, about the connections and the, the family that she had. She also is showing me a grandmother, that there was a connection between her and a grandmother. But she says that in this family, um, they didn't have very much. There wasn't a lot of money. There wasn't a lot of, um, she says there was a lot of love and there was, there was food. They, they had means, but she said there were a lot of children. And um, there was also a communication that she was able to do with the grandmother. Um, is deaf? Eric says that the grandmother was deaf or couldn't hear ah. so that she had a communication and and she was never taught to communicate this was something she says that uh, she was just naturally very good
good at and that the other family members would use her to communicate with the grandmother. Did she use gestures or did she use telepathy or both or something else? She's actually giving me the feeling and yeah, giving me the feeling here and saying that it was a lot of te telepathy. Okay. It was a lot of just understanding with the grandmother, but she says it was also gestures. And she's just saying too that um, there is a connection between the two of them. So there was an understanding that was there and that she was able to pick up on cues mm. with the grandmother. So um, I feel like the grandmother wasn't able to see. Oh, oh. I'm getting the eyes being covered. Yeah. yeah. So that there was not sight, but I'm feeling vibration and sound mm -hmm. and understanding. That's cool. So maybe that's connected somehow with the fact that you were taught sign language uh, by humans as a gorilla. Is there a connection there? She says yes. And that was one of the reasons why that life is so prominent because um, communication was something that she has worked through in, in other lives in different forms. Ah, now you were captive from birth. Were you happy throughout your life living with humans? And did they take you away from your mother or was your mother dead or did your mother die? So you were captive of birth. Were you happy? She said that there was, um, she was very young um, being taken away from her mother, that there was, um, there was not um, anything that, she said that, that it would be no different than taking a small child out of a situation that was dependent on the mother figure. She said she didn't have the conscious awareness to know that she was taken from her mother because she was still given everything that she needed. It was more of an adjustment, but she said that her mother, um, her mother was not dead. Uh, I feel like her mother was separate. I don't know if the, if there was the mother disowned her or there's something that occurred. Um, well, what is it, uh, Eric? Maybe you can help. What happened? Why did it take, I mean, I hope it wasn't a great mother, a baby relationship and you know, humans just ripped uh, you Coco from your mother's arms. No, it doesn't. It, it, Eric's saying, no, it wasn't like that. Um, he's showing me, uh, a lot of people in a situation and I get the feeling that there was something that blocked the mother from, um, an accident or something, Eric, or something that happened possibly. He says that there was, there was, um, there was a disconnection that, that occurred. So possibly the mother was not, maybe had been hurt or something of that sense. I'm being shown a lot of images right now, um, but she's just, she's really focusing on the fact that that was not really an issue. Okay. That taking her way, that she wasn't just, um, she's putting love around the situation and saying that she wasn't just taken and pulled out of a situation and ripped from her mother's arms. She was it wasn't safe. like that. She was she safe. Was safe. Okay, good. Uh, now, Coco, do you have an understanding that you were different, at least in some ways, from humans? I mean, or I know you probably do now, but did you then? She said, yeah, yes, um, to a degree. She understood that she had differences, but she had a great deal of love for those that cared for her, and she did feel part of that family. And she's also saying to, and Eric is holding up uh, toys, like um, little stuffies and things, and that they did things to, for her to help engage that so that there wasn't that um, feeling of I'm being put separate in a cage or I'm being um, treated differently than these folks. It was more like they come at these times and they help me and feed me. They take care of me. They spend time with me. It, it was not this uh, feeling of separation of I'm not the same as you. Okay. Uh, what, in what way did you feel like you were different though than humans? Um, she says physically. Um, so Eric's saying that she had the conscious awareness of the fact that if she put her arm beside a human being's arm, that it looked different. 
Mm -hmm. Um, she also had a conscious awareness of her size of her mass. And I, and is that because he says that that was something that became apparent to her, the more that she would learn, it was her size was so much bigger than the rest. Ah, Okay. Like she's, she's, and it's not her energy. She physically says she's ballooning up her size. Okay. She physically says that her size is that much different. Okay. Uh, now, Coco, was it very difficult for you to learn the sign language? Or did you have a true understanding of it? She says she did have a very good understanding of it. And she also says too that um, she learned very quickly and she was, um, they worked persistently with her um, Mm -hmm. almost in a therapeutic kind of way, she says. What do you mean? Uh, It wasn't like, um, she says, if we were to compare how I was trained or how I worked with sign language, you wouldn't compare that to how say a dog trainer would work with a dog. Ah, There was so much more emotion put to it that it was, it was therapeutic in the sense that it didn't seem like work for her. Mm. It was fun for her. It was engaging for her. And she keeps bringing me, um, she shows me a female and she keeps bringing me the feeling that um, she had an affection for a female and there's one male that I've felt too that I remember this but from before there's a okay. male figure there too so um, I feel like that was a connection so she was she was uh, quite capable of catching on quickly and this the sign language was what it was for those that were training her um, that started to change the understanding of really what she was more consciously aware of Oh, well, that's interesting. So you never felt like you were some a part of some sterile uh, scientific experiment? She says, absolutely not. Were you? Absolutely not. Were you ever mistreated, even by a, a handler that then got fired because of it or whatever? Mistreated in she any way? no. Physically, said, negligence, anything? She said no. She oh, said that... Uh, Uh Uh-oh, I can't hear you all of a sudden. Uh Uh-oh, I can't hear you, but it'll come back. Come on, Eric. Oh, wait a minute. You're muted. Oh, you... Sorry, something happened there. Yeah, it muted you for some reason. I don't know. Okay. 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 Um, She just said that uh, she was never mistreated she was never mishandled and that she's saying that the connection that she had um, with the people that she was with, the handlers, or it was very family orientated. Um, she says that there were some that didn't know quite how to handle her, but mm. um, it, was, it was not, um, she was not put out like a circus display. Oh. Those that had connections with her, there was meaning for all of them. Oh, there was learning that went both ways and it was never um, in an environment that would ever have put her in some sort of distress or pain. Oh, thank God. Did you ever have the un- understanding that gorillas were really supposed to be wild and free? Or were you even around any other gorillas? Did you, did you even know that other gorillas existed? Like they show you television, you know, films or, or. She said that she that. did that she did have um, the understanding that there were others that were like her. She said that the instincts that she had um, of freedom were, she says it's nature, nature and nurture. So she said she was given and was treated in ways that would help her explore that. But she never had memories of, um, she's showing me, and I got to tell you, Eric is like showing himself swinging oh from my like, gosh. <laughs> and oh, he's done that. I have a said, of doing that when he was little. So go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. She said that, um, she didn't have that memory that had she have been, um, older and 
um, been in captivity at a much younger, much older age, that there would be those instincts to undo. And sure. what she's comparing that to is she says, even when we look at ourselves, and she says, think about ourselves and um, as human beings, the experiences that we have and how our families and those that are around us shape our beliefs. And she said that was very much the same for her. What did they ever show you? Other uh, gorillas um, or show you films or videos or whatever of other gorillas? She, um, I see a television set. Okay. And I also feel like she may have had interaction. Um, did you <laughs> She she did okay. So she's saying that she had interaction with another gorilla, other gorillas, and I want to say more than one. Okay. So, oh, that's right. Point, you had some, you had a, a, a mate. I don't know a romantic, you know, a sexual mate, but reproductive mate. But we'll get to that later. Uh, did did you choose to to be in captivity before you incarnated? Was it like part of a spiritual contract? Yes, she says this was not just for her spiritual contract, but um, one of the handlers, she, oh. she's isolating again a male energy and okay. saying this was very much part of a spiritual contract between the two of them. Oh. Did you have any favorite caregivers? You talked about one woman and one man, one male. Uh, were those your two favorites? She's highlighting the female energy. And what she's saying is, this was a love of her life. She Aww. said, um, and she says that she spent most of her time, uh, a lot of the deep emotional connections she had is with this female energy. Aww. And I don't know if this person had family as well because she's saying they were my family and oh. I feel like it's going with this female and who she is surrounded by okay so Did you feel like yeah. she was a mother or a sister to you or something else she says a combination of a little bit of both okay or a friend too I mean you know that could be it. and a friend and a friend too she said, okay. but she is saying that um, not a peer. She didn't okay. feel like a peer and that, and Eric is saying um, feeding and handling. Like there's things that just instinctively, it felt like a caregiver. Okay. Uh, were you ever lonely? I mean, everybody gets, every being probably gets lonely, but what about you? She's expressing that she did have some loneliness at times mm -hmm. um, for companionship. Um, she had loneliness at times for companionship for those that she knew when they what weren't you, with her. Oh, I see. Okay. Whether human or gorilla mm -hmm. or kitties. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, yeah, she, just, she, show, she showed me a, a kitten. Oh, mm -hmm. all right. Uh, how do you feel about humans in general as, as a species? She's, she's saying that she loves, she loves humans, but she doesn't love some of the choices that some of the humans on our earth make. Are you talking from um, your perspective now? She's saying that, Oh, we, are you, do you want to hear her perspective as what she felt of humans living? Well, or, yeah, both, if you want. Both? Yeah. Okay. Um, no, she's speaking from now that she has a great love for the human beings on the earth. She says that it hurts her heart. Um, and I've got quite a sinking feeling. She says it hurts her heart. It hurts her being to see what some of the choices and some of the, um, the things that do occur um she's saying that as a, a living being when she was living in this life um she didn't have fear of humans mm. she she didn't feel if anything she felt like humans were part of her extended group they were part of her 
you know, if they would call them Pax or her, um, her family. And she didn't have an understanding outside of that. But what yeah. she did say is, is that she had a very good intuitive ability and she was able to, um, she had different people that she would visit with or different people that would study with her. And she did have that intuitive ability to pull away or maybe be a little more interactive with somebody. She knew what they were capable of doing. And that was part of her natural instincts that she had. Okay. Cause I'm sure somebody might come in and just have had a bad day fought with their wife or something and you kind of pick up on the emotions. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Yes. Do you have a gorilla form now? Or what sort of form do you have? I guess. She says, well, I can have whatever form I want. And the form that I see her in right now, physically with my eyes, I see a column of light. And in my oh. third eye, she's a gorilla. And it's, it's a, her light is a very big, big presence. Oh, I bet. That's pretty cool. Now, uh, this one blog member also says, on YouTube and photos, you look very sad and maybe even crying at times. Can you tell us why? I and mean, what was making you feel sad, if you were even sad? She says that this is a really good example to talk about how the media could portray or how things can look um, because there are, are photos that were taken in moments that um, possibly she was, she's saying that eyes dripping doesn't always necessarily mean crying, so to speak. And she said that um, the media can sometimes make things look a certain way. She said that she was not sad. Those pictures did not capture the pure essence of what was really going on. So it's like fake it, news to me. Maybe yeah. maybe some of the animal activist groups, which I do condone, right? Were uh, yeah. you know, upset about her being in, in captivity, but I guess it's better than dying without a mother. Yeah. So all right. Uh what were Coco's thoughts about meeting Mr. Rogers, Robin Williams, Betty White? Um let's see. Coco met other famous people, including William Shatner, Flea, whoever that is, Leonardo DiCaprio, Peter Gabriel, and Sting. Does Coco have any notable she would like to mention about any of them? Any anything notable she would like to mention about anything? So that's kind of a broad question. Well, Robin Williams energy just came in here with oh. Eric right now. Uh-oh. He's Hi, standing Robin. right back there. He says, Hello. And uh um, he probably had so, just as much fur as Coco, right? That's Hi, exactly Robin. that's exactly what he was showing me. Because he's going hoo, hoo, like you know, <laughs> like doing the whole monkey thing, and he is so furry. Oh, he is so boy. furry. That's what he's saying. But um Coco is just saying that uh she she never had the comprehension that these people were what they were to us, mm -hmm. what we thought of them to be. So she says each interaction with everyone that she she had these special moments with were special to her because the um, the energy and she's making me feel like the energy of Betty White was very special. Oh, I'm that just ask. that it interaction is. She does. With, oh my God, it's yeah. gonna be huge when she dies. I don't want her to ever die. Oh, I love Betty White. Yeah. Oh, she's so real. Okay, so yeah. you, uh, so was that your favorite of of all the you know? I guess celebrities or notables or whatever that you met, or do you have other favorites? She says um, to Robin Williams, she goes, this one wasn't too bad over here. Aww. This one was a lot of fun. Um, she's not really pointing out anyone else in particular. Um, I feel like somebody was eating with her because she's giving me the sense that she shared a meal or shared food. So I'm not sure who that was with. Who was it? That's with Rob, Robin, Robin Williams. Oh, Robin okay. Williams. Was there anybody whose energy you weren't super fond of that you met? Um, a little bit earlier, and she's just showing me now that there was somebody that came in to help 
wherever she was living that came in to do something. And I feel like this person had something to do with electronics or um, was not a direct with her. Okay. Right. And um, that his energy used to make her feel off. Yeah, but didn't mistreat but her. But not. Yeah, good. No, no. Uh, all right. Uh, another question. What was life like for you, Coco, in captivity prior to sign language, to learn sign language, compared to after? She said there was still communication. Um, she was very, very intuitive, she said. Um, she was able to have an understanding with those that were with her. She goes, now, sign language made that a whole lot easier. Oh, yeah. And once, once that hump was gotten over, um, but she says before that, it was no different than if, and she's bringing up with autism and with other different, you know, there was other, there was other things that were used in place ah. of sign language that communication was part of. So she, she said it was just different. It wasn't so like, necessarily. Yeah. Like lecture, I mean, uh, gestures, a uh, facial mm -hmm. expression. Mm -hmm. uh, she's doing uh, this with emotional. Her yeah. Oh yeah. She's, okay. She's grabbing her lips yeah um possibly she was happy or silly or the way she would pull her lips mm -hmm. so that those that were with her um were able to pick up on those cues and ah. understand how she was feeling and ah. she also says habit uh repeating things over again and habit was also a way to communicate so okay uh what she so think they could think okay what do you think about other apes, chimps, or you know, captivity uh, in the research lab? Hmm. She said that not. She said she can't do a blanket answer for all of that as one. Oh yeah. Because there are things that are going on that are not okay. Well, that are not. Oh yeah, of course not. But when you were alive, also. Well, actually, that, this was about how do you feel about it. Yeah, there's of course there's horrible things going on. I don't even want to know about it. Oh, she said that. she didn't have consciousness of captivity oh, okay. as it wasn't. It wasn't like that. So she didn't really have that conscious. Now she is saying that um, with her the way she was though, had they have taken her and put her in a situation and she were to see that she couldn't get to her peers or um, if she were to see it in a different, uh, a different light, I suppose is what you're saying, then her reactions might've been a little more primitive. They might have changed a bit, yeah. but she didn't see that. She didn't have conscious awareness of that. Good. Were you in a cage most of the time or were you allowed to like wander around the room and hang out with your, human buddies she's showing me that there was an area um and it's quite a big area with metal bars and there's a, a gate and the gate is open mm -hmm. um she's saying that she didn't have free reign to just go wherever but that her handler um those that understood her and knew that there were certain things that were always taken into consideration for their safety and for hers mm -hmm. as well but that it wasn't she this is quite large is what she's showing me it's it's not a tiny little you no know, this is quite a large area she also had um so i feel like they had a um eric is it like a like an outdoor terrarium. Oh, okay. Like some sort of outdoor place that she could go into and have um, play like time. exercise and yeah. play time and all of those types of things, she says. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, did you ever like, were you ever walked out hand in hand with the caregiver into another room where like the only humans are, I mean, outside of your habitat? She says she was. Um, she was transported to other places because I could she was that. brought to other locations. Yes. Okay. She was. Yeah. Uh, did you have enough toys and 
play things to distract you and to entertain you? She said yes. What was your yes. favorite? She, uh, she shows me a blanket, a small oh. blanket, and she also has a um, a stuffed animal, like a stuffed kitty. Oh. Like a little stuffed, yeah. Yeah, okay, tell me about that because I don't see that. What, what about that thing with the little kitty? So she's showing me first um, more than one kitten. There's several kittens. Okay. And I'm seeing her sit and I can see kittens around her. Okay. So. And so did she say? Yeah, go, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So she, she's saying that there was a contract between her and this kitten. Oh, there was really? a contract, a friendship, and she said, and this was a whole different kind of communication to itself. And yeah. she took one of these kittens. She does make me feel like there are more than one kitten. Mm -hmm. So um, I, she's only showing me holding one at a time, but I feel like there was more than one kitten. But she, she said that um, there was a special kind of love, and she said that was her maternal instinct. Oh, why did they give you a bunch of kittens to crawl all of these? She said that they believed that she was gentle. They yeah. believed that she was, uh, they felt very strong in her, the way they had seen her uh, handle and had seen her behave. Mm -hmm. um, she says with the toys and with other, with people in general, and that she had this um, abounding kind of love that came from her, uh, oh. a very nurturing, loving, tender type energy. And somehow these kittens, I'm not quite sure, she's not telling me exactly how they came in, but there was a decision to be made to allow her to have a kitten. And she's saying that this kitten, this kitten lived with her. Oh, so mommy, get out of the kitten, lived please. With her. Please, mommy, I promise I'll take care of it. Yeah, I've heard that line before. That's hilarious because she's showing me this kitten getting bigger as a cat and her big gorilla hands, wow. like taking care of this cat. That is adorable. Oh, <laughs> so how did she show affection? Uh, toward humans, would you stroke their hair, kiss them, hug them? What, what sort of things, how would you show affection to, to for example, your, the female caregiver that you were very close to? Um, she, when we were just talking, just before you said that, she was showing me blonde hair and um, her hands on it and going through the hair, touching the hair, touching the face, Aww. touching the nose. And, and she's also saying too, just um, she's making a point about the question earlier about seeing the differences. Mm -hmm. And she says part of that is her exploration ah. and touching, but it's, and it also was showing, um, uh, showing her showing the other being that she was gentle it's like i touch you now you touch me ah, like that type of that type of energy okay would you ever That's kiss cool. or hug or do gorillas she even that, kiss i don't know those is a pretty big lip she said, she said yes she said yes that she did kiss and hug yes oh, okay mm -hmm. um all right what can you tell us, Coco, about the intelligence of the uh, ape species that could enlighten us more about them? You know, maybe we have some misunderstanding about their intelligence. So maybe you can set us straight. The first thing she says is that evolution is not just affecting the human beings. Oh, yeah. That it's affecting all beings and the potential that we all have, including apes and chimps and gorillas and all species um there is a bigger potential mm -hmm. and she said that there is a lot that we don't understand um and there's studies that continue and she said that um she said there's a lot that we can understand about our own energy 
in our own being by studying the apes and studying um, studying how they are. And she also just says in a in a environment that would be productive for everyone. But she said that um, the the ape species has a lot more capability. But at the same time, she's saying that it's also not something that it's um, what needs to happen is a respect of them living in the environment that's best for them and yeah. us not abusing that and separating it to try and make. He says the truth is, is that their species, meaning the apes and chimps, all have their own evolution to go through. Yeah, of course. And she said, so she's making it feel like more of observation and okay. us taking less of a, let's try and make you like a human being. Oh, yeah. Or take over your, your terrain, et cetera. Yeah, now, that too. <laughs> apes also have, some of them, have a reputation for being aggressive and unpredictable, but we also know uh, from situations like Coco's that they can be sweet and loving. Uh, what do you have to say about that, Coco? I mean, chimps and, and humans, uh, from what I understand, are the only two species that will kill for sport, for example. So that's, I mean, most of the other apes, it seems like their aggression is for survival or to, to uh, win over a mate or territory, etc. So maybe you could expound on that. She said, um, so she started talking when you were finishing there, and she said that, um, first of all, she says, there's really no difference that we say that there are some people that come with a certain DNA mm -hmm. that are more prone. Let's say we go back to the idea of nature versus nurture. So in a certain situation, they're going to be more prone to be aggressive or be a certain way. And she says, so really the um, meat and potatoes of that whole idea is not much different than what human beings would be. Okay. So she said, you know, it, Yes, you could still have an ape that was put into the same situation as her that, say, didn't have the same experience because that ape wasn't able to be in that environment. Okay. She's like, not all apes would be able to do what she did. And that's oh, yeah. just, you know, and, and that, that's just the way it is, just like human beings, she says. Well, why do some ch uh, chimps uh, kill for sport like humans? She says that there are things about chimps, just like humans, there is mental illness. Oh. There are things within them that um, are not widely understood. Um, there's also that vindictiveness, mm. that they have a consciousness to feel almost like a, uh, an anger or a slightedness mm. in some way. Okay. I guess it's on a case by case basis. Yeah, and that's what she was just saying. It, um, that it's hard to put one blanket on that because that's a very complex. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, really, you could get pretty complex in looking at that. Okay, here's another one. Uh, can you tell us about the doll you were given that you cared for as if it were your own baby? Was it similar to a human child caring for a doll, or was it deeper than that? And and also. Do you wish you had babies of your own? She said that she had a maternal instinct and yes, she did want to care. She did want to care for another being, but she's saying that that doll was like an extension of her caregiver. Oh, interesting. That, that, that doll was very much like that line. So she says, if a mother were to go away and leave their child with something that had her scent on it oh, or something that looked, she said that made her feel like it was part of her family. That was the extension. So that's pretty interesting. That is very yeah. cool. Oh, uh, okay. Now, can you tell us about your, uh, your relationship with your mate, Mike? What was it like for you when you lost Mike? So it was very sad. Yeah, of course. It was, it was devastating. Um, 
she said that there was there was grieving and it was evident that she was grieving yeah well what kind of relationship was it a friendship a sexual relationship she said uh like a, when we mentioned the name Mike earlier, she said brother, and she's saying oh, okay. that it was more of a, she said it was deeper than a friend, ah. but it doesn't feel sexual. Okay. It doesn't feel um, maybe that was there, but she's saying it's the, uh, like a brotherhood, like a- Okay, um, so your brother, like sibling. That type of thing. All right. Yeah. Did, why didn't she have babies? And do you wish she you had? Said, she first said that that wasn't her path. Okay. Um, she makes me feel like that was a consideration. She's not really expanding on that, but she says, um, she says, is that something that she didn't, what she knew, and again, she's bringing it back to, what she knew was what she had and she yeah. did have that mothering instinct and it was never something that she felt that she was missing ah okay but she's saying that it was wanted for her and what i feel by that is that and i'm not sure she couldn't have babies for some reason mm -hmm. or if they tried to do it or something like that but she's being very like hmm, like ah. it wasn't it wasn't like a big deal. She was very fulfilled in other ways. Okay, that's good. Um, well, I tell you, I think it's really wise of you to go with kittens because during my motherhood, there were times, for, especially when they were my five kids were teenagers, and I thought, oh, God, I should have had five kittens instead. I really did say that. Oh, God. Ay, boy, it'll slap the ego out of you, girl. All right. Uh, are you with your mate, Mike, now? Yes. Yes, have and Mike is right. I've got Mike's energy right beside oh, her. Oh, yes. hi, Mike. Uh, have you had any other incarnations with Mike? Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, that's good. Now, do people and gorillas reincarnate between species, or are they separate? No, we sort of uh, answered that because you were a human child before. She's been um, other species before too. She's showing me a tiny, tiny little bug. Oh, little well, bug. Which can you say in a, a, a life that most influenced your life as Coco? Maybe it was the one in South America as a little girl who had these communication communication gifts. She said it was, and she's also saying that there were um, communication was something that she didn't master in okay. every life okay. so she's saying that it was a um it took her a couple of lifetimes yeah to get that down pat but she said that the the previous life that she had had with communication with the grandmother was very much focused and attached or um uh, eric says karmically carried it was karmically oh, the energy was karmically carried forward into this lifetime okay well what about your your life as a bug tell us about that She said it was very short. <laughs> oh, why did you get stomped on? I don't think. No, she said, she said she died. She just, she died. So um, I'm asking her what kind of bug she is or what kind of bug she Ooh, was. Oh, don't say cockroach gross. Blech. No, no. And you know, it's crazy because I saw them first before she said it, but firefly. Oh, okay. So I don't know if they have a really short lifespan oh, or something, but yeah. Uh, what was your mission in this life as Coco? And do you think you fulfilled it? She said, yes, her, her, her first thing was her existence and her example of unconditional love. Mm. It was also unconditional love and showing communication and showing that communication and love can exist across species, mm. can exist across um, 
different human beings, that it doesn't matter, that there's always a way when love is present. And she said that that was very present within her bond and that she did, did master that in this lifetime. Well, that's awesome. That's true. You know, communication with love, that's, that's what can connect us and, you know, bring us into the mindset that we are all part of a collective, that we're all one. Were you here that's to right. learn that or teach that? She says both. Okay. Is there anything else you were here to either learn or teach? Patience. Oh, she said you, patience yeah. was a big one. What, were um, you there to learn it or teach it or probably both? She said a little bit of both, but she says it um, was a little more about the patience that others, the, the ones that were working with her were also yeah. learning because they did I mean, they would, got, would get very excited, she said, when there would be um, some growth and movement forward. So it became a, a big thing as she progressed and that love built, was building. Oh, that's awesome. And I'm sure you probably had some frustration and temper tantrums, et cetera. So it's, it, it probably was hard for you to be patient with us humans. She, yeah. Yeah, she said she had her moments, and she takes her lip and does this big, the big oh. lip. <laughs> what does that mean? What does that mean, Coco? Like, like she says, right. like I had, like I had my moments, kind of like bratty, like oh, I had I see, my moments. I well, we could all be brats. All right, is there something yeah. you can share with us that very few people, if anybody, knows about? She's showing me a human hand and she's taking her finger and she's making a little pattern in the hand. You mean and like this? Like this? The human Yeah, hand like a little hand. Okay, okay. So so her hand is touching a human being's hand ah. and it's like a little signal. And I feel like what she's showing me and and Eric is saying that I have it right. What I understand is right is that she had some sort of a something that she would say to those that she loved hmm. it was like a little signal and and it feels like a very much um like a mother would say to a child like i love you to the moon and back that type oh, of thing i see yeah oh, so she's saying that there was a signal that, that certain people knew that was done with the hand okay what was your transition like and were there any insights or surprises for you? She's saying that it was very peaceful. Because um, for, well, for Eric, it was, it was like, a oh very my God. For Eric, it was like, peaceful oh my God. and oh, sorry. consistent integration. Okay. Oh, that's good. Uh, yeah. That's right. And she says, not like that. It wasn't like that for her. Okay. Okay. She good. was, she came into it and had a, a memory. Um, she was aware that she was bigger than, than what she thought she was. She had that understanding. And there were also, um, she recognized those that were around her. She had a, a recognition of it. Eric's just adding it. It wasn't a shock. It wasn't okay, a shock to her. And did you meet, I guess, Mike? Was that the one who met you or somebody else? She actually um, said that she met other beings from other lives first. Oh, okay, okay. And that's what she's saying, that there was recognition right away. It was like an understanding of right. Mm. Right, I did this. I forgot. You said goodbye before I left, and we'd meet up again. Oh. That type of thing. Oh, that's so cool. Well, for Eric, I think, Eric, one of your first things was, oh, my God, where's my dick? <laughs> I remember that from your book. Eric's like, Eric's just like doing this with his head, with his hands in his head. And he's like, it was like, oh my God. <laughs> no. oh my, and, and like one of these, like, oh my God. Oh my God. It's like, I didn't get it used it enough. <laughs> I like to embarrass my boy. All right. Uh, Coco, before we close. He's laughing at me. He's laughing at me because he makes comments like that every now and oh, again. Know. He knows that I get red in the face by it. And he's laughing I know. at me. Uh, <laughs> Coco, 
Togo, do you have any message or advice for humanity as a whole? She says, don't take it lightly when, when you're told that love is the unconditional and the only thing that exists, that truly exists. She says, don't take that lightly. She goes, the power of love is more powerful than anything that you could possibly produce or imagine. And she's saying to look at Eric and you and to look at what love can do. Yeah. She says, it doesn't matter what happens to you in your life. If you understand the power of love and you trust and believe in that, then you will have that peace in your heart and you will have exactly what you're here to do, to share, to give. She says, it's so important that those don't just pass it off. And she said that you understand that, yeah. that you really do understand that. Love is all there is. You're right. I, I've heard those words from preachers, etc. Love is all there is, but it's so true. Eric, do you have yeah, any you questions for Coco? He's just being silly. <laughs> no, he doesn't have any questions, but he's got really big noodly arms. And he's going oh, like this. <laughs> this sounds like you. What about you, Michelle? You have anything for Coco? I think we covered so much. Yeah, no, I don't really have anything off the top. She did a great job talk talking you. about everything. She's got a beautiful energy. And yes. she just, she's adding thank you. Oh, thank she's saying you. thank you. And, and she's just row. saying thank you, thank yeah. you for, having, for having this. And thank you for giving her a voice to share her experiences and to share, because this is all part of um, her growth too and the growth yeah. of the spirit as well. She says this is not just a uh, one-sided thing, that this oh, yeah. is very much growth on the whole. So she Good. says thank you very much. Thank you for your profound wisdom. Okay, I really appreciate it. And Michelle, share what you've got to offer and where people can get in touch with you. Well, I will have my website up and running by the end of this week. So that will be the heal, the healingheart.com and heart is spelled H dash A R T as in art. Okay. So I will be found nice and easy on there. And I also have, um, the healing heart at Facebook, facebook.com groups forward slash groups. And I've got a wordpress.com, The Healing Heart, and that's my blog. All right. So you can find me all over the place. <laughs> if they go to your uh, website, will there be uh, ways to click on to get the, to the Facebook? And the, okay, good. All right, guys. Yeah. Check her yep. out. Better get her reading now before she gets booked up for years, if she isn't already. I'm, get, I'm, getting, I'm getting booked I up. Know, I'm I getting know. booked up, and I'm meeting some great, great, fantastic people. Eric and I are doing some awesome things. Awesome. That's very exciting. All right. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Coco. Thank, Thank you, you, Eric. I love y'all. Eric says, love you all. Love you, Mama. Bye. Bye.